Welcome back. Let's turn our attention to Egypt, where one man's trade in cash-damaged cars is booming in trying economic times. Egyptians across the country are saving money and buying damaged second-hand vehicles at less than half the price of brand new models. Battling a weakened currency and soaring custom tax rates, Egyptians are staring towards purchasing second-hand damaged cars instead of brand new models. Mohammed Shaheen, who has traded in damaged cars for over two decades, says that many Egyptians are skipping using dealerships and coming to his workshop attracted by cheaper prices. I buy cars that have been in road accidents and sell them just as they are. I go to dealerships, check what cars they have. They may have 10 or 20, so I buy them. Then people come from villages and from Cairo, and I sell them the car as it is. Egypt's inflation soared after the government cut fuel and energy subsidies. The cuts were a condition of a $12 billion three-year loan program agreed with the IMF, which included subsidy cuts, tax increases, and looser capital controls. This, coupled with higher custom tax rates and rising inflation, has left many cash-conscious buyers unable to splurge on expensive cars. Cars today cost about 300,000 Egyptian pounds, and not everyone can afford to buy that. But when the car has been in an accident, it drops to about 130,000, and when fixed, it can reach 200,000, and that's about 80,000 less than its initial market price. Everyone does this now because they're trying to save. Many Egyptians tighten their wallets and change their purchasing habits. The pounds post fill depreciation helped Egyptian exports, but did little for prices of dollar-dependent imports, which soared in response to the pound's value. Now, Egyptians find it cheaper to buy and fix second-hand cars. The 2017 UNEP Sustainable Innovation is taking place in Nairobi, the Kenyan capital, and that's where China's green technologies have come under the spotlight. The expo opened on Sunday as the first ever held by the United Nations Environment Programme. On display are technologies and solutions by 40 outstanding innovation-oriented enterprises from around the world. One-tenth of the exhibitors are from China, thanks to their efforts in low-carbon growth, eco-restoration and green travel. The most outstanding technologies and solutions will be awarded with the UNEP champions of the Earth titles. We are delighted to find that a big portion is from China. This demonstrates that China has struck substantial progress in green innovation and Chinese enterprises are more mobilized to go global to boost sustainable development and green transformation. On the one hand, this is a contribution to the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals of the UN. It also injects new vitality into the cooperation between China and the countries along the Belt and Road, especially African and developing countries. As an activity of the third meeting of the UN Environment Assembly, the Sustainable Innovation Expo aims to provide the platform for governments and enterprises to share green innovation technologies and work and solutions to thorny environmental issues. Among these enterprises, many, as we see, are innovation-oriented ones. Innovation sprouted in China and spread to elsewhere in the world, bringing about common development opportunities and benefits to all countries. Therefore, we hope the UN Environment Assembly, as a global platform, will provide more opportunities for such enterprises to display their green technologies. In addition, we expect to promote more South-South cooperation among countries and among enterprises through this expo. The third meeting of the UN Environment Assembly runs till Wednesday. Togolese have come together to run pollution out of Lome by organizing races across the capital. They get runners to pick litter in a bit to get the people more involved in keeping the environment clean. 
Echo Rodney's Togo's new workout craze. Participants hit the streets of the capital, Lome, to jog while saving the environment. Chanting, let's run, let's save the planet. Runners go through the streets picking up litter. It's not unusual to find garbage made up mostly of plastic bags and bottles on roadsides and clogging drains. Lome suffers from poor waste management and has underdeveloped recycling facilities. In an effort to deal with the problem, young Togolese entrepreneur Felix Tagwa launched Echo Run, which brings together amateur and hobby runners, when he found most of his routes were always littered with trash. We wanted to combine sport, which is important for our well-being and combine it with something useful for the environment. That's why we created Echo Run. When we pick up trash, it's then treated and then used for recycling. The trash is recycled and will later be used to make something useful. Every month, runners go through a different neighborhood in Lome collecting trash. The runs usually take 45 minutes to an hour. The initiative, which was launched in January this year, is growing in popularity, especially amongst young people. Children as young as six years old can participate in the run. Local authorities say the initiative has contributed to a cleaner city and inspired citizens to get more involved in protecting the environment. Echo Run has contributed to cleaner streets and more and more people have joined this movement. Echo Run has set a great example for us all. Felix also works with a local environmental NGO that recycles collected waste for free. These are simple gestures that teach people to be environmentally responsible by walking out and cleaning their environment at the same time. It's a great initiative and has already done a lot for raising awareness on the environment. Felix and his partners have also launched Echo Run in neighboring Ivory Coast and Ghana. With 3D printing, South African students are building an affordable prosthetic hand that listens to muscles. The students say the hand offers advanced functionality controlled by the human nervous system. A team of electrical engineering students at South Africa's University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg have been working on a prosthetic hand, which when perfected is expected to be affordable, while still offering advanced features that can allow users greater human control. Using 3D printing, the students say they can keep the cost of production low compared to commercially available prosthetics with the same capabilities. PhD candidate Abdul Khalik Mohammed is the lead engineer for this project. The project started when I was doing my master's research. Um, I was looking for an application for control engineering in the body. And I stumbled across this idea where you can control a robotic prosthetic hand with neural signals from the body. So I thought to myself, that's something really valuable. Imagine the case where a person doesn't have a hand and here you provide them with this robotic prosthetic hand and now all of a sudden they're able to do things that they thought were uh, they would never be able to do again. Um, so there's a, a huge benefit to people who have had amputations and even other people who have had motor impairments for them to be able to use their hand in sort of a, a, as, as normal people would. This kind of mobility technology is not entirely new. But at the expected cost of 150 US dollars, it will have far reaching impact for amputees and people with impaired motor functions across the developing world. Robotic limbs can cost over to 10,000 US dollars. Depending on where the uh, level of amputation will be, it will either be connected to the forearm or the bicep or even the shoulder. Um, the user will then intend to move the hand. Um, and initiate the movement of the hand by contracting one of these muscles, either in the forearm or the bicep. And then the hand would then contract or produce a specific um, movement. We then have the sensors on the hand would uh, pick up the force with which the hand is grasping and then relay this information to uh, vibration sensors which would be positioned on another part of the body so that the user would get a, a sense of the force with which the hand is grasping. And in that way, the brain would understand, okay, we, 
you know, the hand is grasping with, with this amount of force, and I'm applying this amount of force, so there's a feedback loop involved. The innovation has already won the support of South Africa's Amputee Club, a non-profit organization that put the number of amputees in the country at 2.1 million in 2011. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am Bisi Adebayo.